Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor and I'm a birth and postpartum doula in New Jersey and I am coming to you guys with something different right now. I've been trying to integrate my work as a doula with my creative outlet in YouTube and sorry my phone is buzzing. I think I've kind of come up with a solution in a way that I can continue my studies as a doula and also continue my love for creating YouTube videos. So with that being said, I will be coming out with a video every single week. That's my goal. In that video, I will provide a doula tip that I have learned about recently or that I find that it's important to pass along to new mommies and new doulas. I will always provide some evidence-based links down below, or, which is typically where I get my information from. As a doula, I like to provide the evidence along with science, along with tradition. So it's kind of all meshed into one for me, but I will always try to provide the sources that I get my information from, the books that I read, and things along those lines. If you guys have been following with me along my journey in the last few months, you'll see that I really always share what books I'm reading and the little podcasts that I listen to and things like that. If you're looking for other materials to get some more information for your own work, check out my other vlogs, Day in the Life, all those different doula videos. I provide a lot of what I actually study from. So definitely check those out if you're into doula work and want some more sources to add to what you already have. So today we are talking all about cabbage leaves for mastitis and engorgement and weaning. I find it's very useful to know these things before beginning breastfeeding and also for doulas to know to share with their clients so they have an idea of what could possibly happen when they do begin breastfeeding. Breastfeeding is natural but that doesn't mean it's easy. These challenges are very common. Very common. The reason that cabbage leaves work is it is filled with nutrients that help reduce inflammation and swelling and this can also ultimately help in pain reduction. So it's a great natural remedy along with breast massage and other remedies to just fully support breastfeeding in its different stages. So the green cabbage leaves are best effective when they are chilled in the fridge and the way that you would prepare it is you would cut the leaf away from the stem so you have some really nice big leaves to work with and you want to place them around the breast so it's kind of like this type of shape we want to avoid the nipple because there's just no reason for it to be on the nipple and you can put these in a loose fitting bra a sports bra something that is comfortable and that won't feel too restricting when using them so you can do this on both breasts or whichever side you are treating and the treatments will look different depending on if you're using them for engorgement weaning or mastitis so we're going to get into that right now Cabbage leaves ultimately lead to drying up milk. So if you are using them for weaning, it's going to look a lot different than if you're just using them for engorgement. If you're using cabbage leaves for engorgement, you're only going to place them on the breast until you feel relief. That is it. You don't want to overuse them and overdo it. So it may only look like a few minutes depending on how you're feeling and how your breasts are feeling. But because engorgement is typically making the breast harden and making it feel full and swollen, this can really aid before a feeding. So if you do this before a breastfeeding session, before a pumping session, before hand expressing, you'll find that you have some good results in getting that inflammation down and really moving that milk. Some women don't see any difference until a few hours later, but I find, and in these articles, I found that it works best along with another remedy, such as breast massage. That is really going to be when you feel the most benefit from them because breast massage helps to move the milk. If you are using cabbage leaves for mastitis, this isn't going to clear the bacterial infection, but it will help in reducing swelling and aiding in comfort. Something chilled on the breast when you're having an infection can help with pain management, so it can be a great tool to use if you are feeling like you are swollen and red and irritated, um, but we don't want to overdo it in the case of mastitis either. So the best way to do a mastitis treatment is to use it for 20 minutes or so or until the leaf becomes warm and doing this two to three times a day won't affect your milk supply. So just being mindful of the amount of time that they're on the breast and how often you're doing it throughout the day will help control not overusing them. 
And last but not least, these really help in weaning because that is what cabbage leaves are known for. They're known for making the weaning process a little bit more comfortable because it can be a little bit awkward when you go from a full supply down to nothing. It's going to take some time. The perk with using them for weaning is you don't have to worry about using the cabbage leaves too much. You can use them for as long as you'd like. They can literally wilt on you and then you can throw them away and do another session. It doesn't matter about how long you use them for or how many times a day because the ultimate goal is drying up your milk. They can also be used along with other remedies if you are pre prescribed something from a doctor or if you have another technique that you're also using. It can only enhance drying up your milk. So that's all I have for you on cabbage leaves and how to use them with mastitis, weaning, and engorgement. But if you guys have any questions, always feel free to reach out to me, leave a comment down below, email me, however you feel most comfortable with getting your questions across. I've gotten a few emails and a few in Instagram messages and I love connecting with you guys and reaching out and chatting about everything doula like. So always feel free to reach out to me if you do have a specific question and you don't want to leave it in the comments. Thank you guys so much for being here and don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it, if you want more doula tips and if you think that it's a cool idea to provide you guys with a big tip every week because I'm really looking forward to it and I hope you guys are too. I'll see you guys in the next video.